shrinking and swelling are two of the biggest issues that we deal with, if not the biggest issues we deal with that are moisture related and pertaining to wood. Shrinking and swelling, one of the biggest areas that this, this has an effect on is with wood flooring. And so not only are we worried about shrinking and swelling of the actual flooring itself, but we also need to be observant or aware of the moisture content of the actual subfloor. Because if we have a, a very um, distinct or a large difference in the moisture content of that floor and the subfloor, significant problems may arise. A general rule of thumb is that the difference in moisture content between the floor and the subfloor is if our parts are no less or less than three inches in width, meaning that each individual piece of our wood flooring is less than three inches in width, we may have a 4% difference in moisture content between the floor and the subfloor. Anything greater than three inches is no more than 2% difference in moisture content. One thing to be aware of is that making sure that both the flooring and the subflooring have reached their EMC prior to measuring or determining that difference in moisture content is very important. If we don't allow that, those, those materials to equalize or reach their equilibrium or EMC, we will not get accurate readings. And so in many cases, flooring that's gonna be applied or installed in a room needs to be brought into that area where it's going to be installed. That room needs to be brought up to the actual or the finished relative humidity and temperature that that room is going to be, be at once that product is installed and allow that flooring to reach that actual EMC. Failure to do so will give us or will give you an inaccurate reading, therefore causing problems down the road. The same thing with the subfloor. If we do not get an accurate reading or allow that material, or that subfloor to reach its EMC, we will get inaccurate readings. Another thing that we talked about is wood will constantly move. As the relative humidity changes, it will either go up or go down. So with wood flooring, where we can have a potential tremendous amount or we have a tremendous amount of space um, taken up by wood, any movement can cause significant problems if we don't allow for that properly. And what we call that is the dimensional change coefficient. Now, the dimensional co change coefficient, what it does is it breaks down different species of wood and tells us how much each one of those species of wood is gonna move. Like I said, wood can vary from 1.5 to, to three times differently in tangential from radial, depending on the density of that material. So by using a dimensional change coefficient or using the dimensional change coefficient table, we can accurately determine how much each one of those species is going to move. So let's use the example of red oak. Red oak has a dimensional change coefficient of 0, 0, 3, 6, 9. So what does that mean? Or how do we use that? Well, that dimensional change coefficient What we need to know is one, the percentage of moisture that changes, also with the width of that material that we will be using. If we have a change in moisture of 6% in, let's say, the wintertime, and we change to 9% moisture content in the summertime, meaning we have a 3% change in moisture content. The next thing we need to know is how wide is our material? So if we have a piece of, of, of flooring that is five inches wide, Okay, we can now determine how much that piece, that one piece of flooring will move. So how do we do that? Well, we take this dimensional change coefficient, 0 0.00369, and we take that times the, the, the change in percentage of humidity, or change, change in percentage of, of moisture content. We multiply that times the width of our material, and that gives us how much that material is actually going to move. And so what that gives us is 0.05. Five, three, five. Meaning that that piece of material with a change of 3% humidity at five inches wide will actually change 55 thousandths of an inch, which is slightly less than a sixteenth of an inch. Meaning that from winter to summer, that piece is going to increase almost a sixteenth of an inch. So that way we can help determine how much we need to allow for expansion and contraction of that flooring. How much of this change could possibly happen or knowing how much to expect of that change. Part of that depends on where you live. Are you closer to coastal um, environments where you have a much wetter or more humid relative or, or more humid or much higher relative humidity? 
or you in an area that tends to be much drier. So obviously in wetter, damper conditions with higher relative humidity, we, ex we expect much more sh uh, swelling. In areas of drier, lower humidity, we're gonna expect much more shrinking. So knowing that or knowing what to, um, or how much potentially that change is gonna be helps us dictate how much, how much movement we're actually gonna have in that material. Another area of concern with wood flooring, besides the actual wood flooring itself, is the subfloor. And an area of concern with that is actually the concrete. So concrete can hold a tremendous amount of moisture, therefore causing potentially um, very big problems if that moisture content is too high, especially if there's a significant difference between that concrete and that floor. A general recommendation is concrete or a slab that has been poured less than 30 days is going to be, have a, a moisture content that is too high to, to uh, adhere a floor to. So anything under 30 days old, we want to stay away from. Anything over that, that's when we can actually start taking measurements or think about applying a wood flooring to that. That does not mean that that moisture content still may not be too high. We can actually use moisture meters that are specifically designed for concrete flooring to measure that, that concrete. But there are, there are many things that can affect concrete and the, and the moisture content of the concrete. To get a very detailed quantitative or qualitative methods of testing, I suggest that you contact the National Wood Flooring Association to get those, those methods of, of testing. Anyone who deals with flooring needs to know how wet or how dry the material is that he's working with. And failure to do so is gonna, could potentially or will cause problems down the road. So things that can happen if we do not have the correct or allow um, for um, the correct moisture content or expansion or contraction due to, to moisture change is cupping, swelling, buckling of that floor. All those things we want to try to eliminate. And by knowing correct moisture content and with the use of a moisture meter, we can, we can identify those problems and hopefully remedy those problems before they actually become a problem. So we can actually find out if we have a moisture content that is too high or we have a concrete floor that has a too high of moisture content or the difference between our subfloor and our floor is, is too much of a difference so that we don't actually apply that floor and waste time, waste materials, waste labor. Before I sign off, let me leave you with one solid bit of advice. Spotting any potential moisture problems and being able to avoid those problems is key in your success in any project that you may be doing with wood. On behalf of Wagner Moisture Meters, I'm Charlie Phillips.